Hello and welcome. Let's take a look at all the switches in a semi and see what they mean. Alright, let's just go down the whole row. We're sitting in the driver's seat here. Here's the panel. Alright, let's take a look at all the switches. First off, this is the dome light right here switch. This turns on the overhead light in the truck. This lane alert is run by this camera in the windshield. The sensor which looks out over the road and looks at the road markings and if you come to either side right or left side of the road you start drifting out of your lane it will sound an alert inside the truck if you press this button you can turn it off for 10 minutes you might need to turn it off if you're in a construction zone or something like that where you wouldn't want the alarm going off if you have to run over a uh, the white line for any length of time <clears throat> HSA override that's hill start assist this truck has hill start assist on it, so on a hill, if you're stopped on a hill and take your foot off the brake, the truck will not roll backwards. But you might want it to go backwards to back into a dock or go down a grade for some other reason. When you press this button right here, you turn off the hill start assist and the truck will go backwards, no problem. Okay, this menu runs the menu dashboard uh, uh, right up here, which we'll get to in a minute. ATC is automatic traction control. This truck is equipped with traction control rear differential. Automatically controls traction, but you could turn that off if you're stuck in the snow and uh, your tires will just spin, just like a car. Engine override shutdown. Uh, the truck is equipped with uh, engine sensors which measure oil pressure, oil uh, capacity, how much oil is in the engine water, coolant, temperature, and uh, coolant level. If any of those fall beyond a certain point or gets too hot, the engine shuts down. But you wouldn't want to shut down on the interstate or on a train track. We could press this button and the truck will run for 30 seconds, which would be enough to get you to a safe place. Regeneration, this is a regen button. This uh, truck, as all newer trucks, are equipped with a diesel particulate filter, which filters out the soot from the exhaust and holds it in a filter. Eventually when that fills up you press the regeneration button and it injects uh, diesel fuel into the filter and burns it out and puts it out back into the atmosphere burned. Uh, supposedly it's cleaner, I don't know. CC limit is the cruise control limit button which has three settings, off, low and high. While you are uh, have your cruise control say set to 60, the truck will pick up speed as you go down a hill. Well, you may or may not want to allow it to pick up speed depending what the speed limit is. Uh, off, it'll just pick up as much speed as it can. Uh, this is low, so it may at 65 the truck will engage the brakes, and uh, maybe on high it might be at, say, 62 the truck brakes come on. Here we have a mirror heat. Uh, that's obvious. The mirrors are heated outside the truck. The large red triangle is for your hazards, and uh, the left button over here is for the dashboard uh, for the lights on the gauges to be lit up. Okay, here on the dash here we have the collision mitigation system. On the front of the truck it's equipped with a radar unit and this collision mitigation system will show me the distance to the vehicle in front of me in feet and the speed that vehicle is traveling at miles per hour. So say 218 feet, 62 miles an hour. The collision mitigation system comes into play with several reasons. You set your cruise control and the system will maintain a safe distance from the vehicle in front of it. It will slow the truck down without me doing anything and speed back up up to the set point and maintaining a safe distance. And uh, it, when the cruise is off it will try to avoid a collision. So if it sees you approaching a vehicle in front of you at a speed it believes you will cause an accident, it will sound an alert and hit the brakes and try to avoid a collision. And uh, that's through a radar unit mounted on the front bumper. Okay, this utility lamp lights up the lights on the back of the tractor, which light up the front of the trailer, so you can work at night loading, uh, hooking up your trailer, unhooking a trailer, things like that. Okay, this, uh, this gauge right here gives me a fuel mileage readout. The current mileage is zero because I'm not moving, right? It'll also give you an average miles per gallon. Since the truck was new, it'll give you a one from when you reset it, anything like that, just like a trip computer in your car. Okay, this knob here, you push to lower the vehicle. When I push this, it lets the air out of the airbags and I can get out from under a trailer or get under a trailer that's been uh, dropped kind of low. Okay, this 
is the traction differential. You can push this to apply it under 25 miles an hour and lock the differential in the rear end. It's an air locker. And uh, that will certainly help with traction if I'm stuck in the snow or in an off-kilter situation. Okay, to unhook from a trailer, I don't have you don't have to get out and do this manually anymore. You can when you are ready to unhook, you pull this and hold it pulled, and you can, it opens the fifth wheel, which is behind the tractor, to uh, unlock it from the trailer, and I just drive out from underneath the trailer. These are the trailer uh, tractor air brakes right here and the trailer air brakes right here. This lever is the trailer brake valve which I could pull down like this and activate the trailer brakes. And uh, you'd want to do that when you're moving the wheels. You'll need to hold the wheels locked while you pull the tractor forward and move the wheels back and forth. Here of course we have your basic AM FM CD player with auxiliary input and weather band. Alright, gauges on the dashboard, of course a tachometer and a water temperature gauge. Here's your fuel gauge and the DEF, which is a diesel exhaust uh, fluid level, which is injected as a urea mixture into the exhaust stream to clean it up uh, for sending back out into the atmosphere. It's because we, want, we don't want to dirty up the atmosphere anymore than we already have. Here's your speedometer and oil pressure gauge. And we have two air tanks and here's the air gauges right there. In front of you have your gear selector and what gear you're in, the miles on the truck, and an outside temperature gauge. This truck is an automatic. Here is the lever. You just spin it for D or N or R. We're in neutral because we're parked here. Just put it in D and drive away. It's very simple, automatic. And uh, this also has different things that you can look at up here. Here's the miles per gallon since I filled up on this trip how many miles you've gone and fuel you've used. On the left is your air pressure as a digital readout. On the right is an oil temperature gauge. And left is transmission temperature. And right is a turbo boost gauge. And then we have a voltmeter. All right. And then as we move along, we have come down here to the uh, temperature control air conditioning, fan speed, and that comes out of the vents here in the dash. There's two there, two in front of you, and uh, two over there. And this is a Galaxy tablet that my company puts in the truck and uses. I uh, use that for logs to communicate back to the company, or they send messages and uh, that type of thing. Right here on this side, and uh, this side runs the uh, button, uh, the numbers up on the panel to change the temperature display and that type of thing. So I hope that you have found this somewhat interesting, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. But this is what a driver deals with all these controls every day.